Okay, so everybody up in arms about Nintendo suing Yuzu and Yuzu settling out of court, acting like the sky is falling and making these knee-jerk videos about how emulation is dead. Oh my God, emulation is dying. No, it's not. Y'all can breathe easy because I'm going to go over some key points as to why Nintendo specifically went after Tropical Haze LLC, who are the owners of the emulators, the Switch emulator Yuzu and the Nintendo 3DS emulator Citra and left alone similar emulators and why this doesn't mean the end to emulations. Uh, keep in mind, this is based on information I was able to gather across the internet. So take it with a grain of salt, but it does hold merit. So first, where did this trouble begin? Tears of the Kingdom and a paywall solution for an unreleased game. So as we all know, Zelda is a very beloved franchise and it's one of Nintendo's console sellers. So when Zelda Tears of the Kingdom was announced, excuse me, it was a highly anticipated game. And it was set to be released on May 13th, 2023. However, a week before the official release of Tears of the Kingdom, somebody obtained an illegal copy of the game an entire week before its launch and leaked it online. And it was said to be at some GameStop, I don't know. But regardless, retailers such as GameStop, Walmart, Best Buy, etc. received boxes of new releases in order to have them in time for the official release day. And when somebody at that retailer decides to sell that game, distribute it, uh, steal it or whatever, before the release day is set, it puts everyone at that specific retailer in trouble. Uh, it causes companies to no longer do business with, with that uh, with that company. Uh, the store can lose money, etc. It, it can even be held legally liable. So please note, it's two factors that will cause Nintendo to go after someone. Infringement and, dare I say, jealousy. And both of these played a factor in why Nintendo went after Yuzu and not similar emulators. So when Tears of the Kingdom leaked, Yuzu had a Patreon where they were supposedly offering fixes for the game on their emulator. And in other words, they were, even though emulation itself isn't illegal, you're providing solutions for a game that hasn't been released yet on top of the fact that you are hiding these solutions behind a paywall on a site such as Patreon. And it doesn't matter if it was for a dollar in order to unlock that information. Nintendo's going to be on that ass. On top of that, the Yuzu emulator was being promoted as a better experience for Tears of the Kingdom than the actual Switch console. Now, these statements didn't come from Yuzu themselves. Other websites and YouTube content creators were quick to promote that the Yuzu emulator had mods for the game that ran the game at 60 frames per second for a smoother experience compared to the 30 frames per second cap on an actual Switch console. And from what I'm to understand, the similar Switch consoles were unable to run those mods effectively. On top of that, in order to even run the Yuzu emulator, you had to have what's known as called product and title keys. And this is what makes the emulator actually run. You know, uh, the only way to get those keys is from an actual switch that you own. Now, while Yuzu nor other switch emulators offer those keys on their site, um, websites like Yuzu, they basically had a pipeline that lets you know uh, where to find them. On top of that, Yuzu had the ability to create its own product and title keys, if the, my information is correct and also decrypt games. So th there, so where other Switch emulators were just mimicking the Switch, Yuzu damn near made a Switch clone that in many ways was better and more powerful than the original console. So all of these factors created a domino effect leading up to Yuzu getting sued and shutting down. And it wasn't the emulator itself, it's what was done with it. However, Yuzu did do two key things. On March 4th, uh, 2024, um, Yuzu settled out of court with uh, Nintendo of America for 2.4 million. And anytime a trial happens, that case can be used as an example uh, for similar cases in the future. Because uh, it was settled out of court, there wasn't a trial. So any similar cases that may happen in the future don't have an example to use. I'm, I'm just saying that in the, in the most basic way possible. And two, like most emulators, Yuzu's code was open source, meaning anyone can download the code, modify it, create their own programs from it. And since nothing on the internet is truly gone, uh, many people downloaded the code and planned on using it to create new emulators in the future. 
and may even pick up where Yuzu left off under a different name. Matter of fact, at the time of me recording this, it was reported that several replacements popped up mere hours after Yuzu shut down. So again, it wasn't the fact that Yuzu existed that made Nintendo want to go after them because the emulator itself can't do anything. But it's, it, it's specifically what they did with the emulator and the whole controversy around Tears of the Kingdom leaking early really brought them to the forefront and that's really what made Nintendo want to go after them. If you go to Yuzu's website or Citra's website, they have this uh, this PSA basically confirming that it was for Tears of the Kingdom. They don't say that specifically, but that was the only game that got leaked online that really caused Yuzu to get in trouble. Now, this actually isn't the first time um, an emulator company got sued. Sony had got sued had sued this company called Connects back in 1998 I believe back in 1999 and because of the digital medium uh copyright act uh the judge at the time said that they it, it didn't hold any merit it didn't hold any monopoly to to anything so they were able to win the uh, so connects was a, actually able to win the suit against uh against Sony and then when you look at other emulators None of these emulators are actually infringing on the copyrights the way Yuzu was. You know, a lot of these emulators exist and, and they're for really for older systems and things like that. You know, when you look at the RPC S3, which is the PS3 emulator, um, in order to get that emulator to work, you need the PS3 firmware, which Sony themselves provide on their website. You know, it's available for public download. And all of these other emulators, they're open source as well. So they're they're really not like the thing that really made Yuzu a target was the whole Tears of the Kingdom nonsense. If it wasn't for that, Yuzu would have been fine. Because mind you, Citra was a Nintendo 3DS emulator that existed years before uh Yuzu, the, the Yuzu Switch emulator. And Nintendo didn't bother to go after them then. So it's just like, what what changed? Really, it was just the whole fiasco. If if that nonsense didn't happen with Tears of the Kingdom, Yuzu would have still been fine. Oh so yeah, the main thing that got Yuzu in trouble was the fact that Tears of the Kingdom leaked early. They had a paywall for solutions in order to get the game up and running on their emulator. And it was even uh, a situation with the fans who just wanted uh, a genuine, you know, Nintendo The Legend of Zelda Tears of the King Kingdom release. Um, experience because I can tell you I was one of the people who not only was trying to avoid the internet for that whole week but also noticed that when the actual release day of Tears of the Kingdom happened it was a bunch of people it was like a good handful of people on YouTube who already had the full playthroughs uh, post dated for for viewership on the release day so that they didn't get in trouble. Now, I even went to TikTok a couple times and I seen like one person playing the game before release day. So it was like all of these factors really, you know, when it comes to video games, especially like a triple A title, like an open world Zelda game, especially one that, that was following up of, of, of a game such as uh, Breath of the Wild, companies want to release that game at the time that they want to in order to provide a certain experience for their fan base. And when someone uh, disturbs that, that could cause them to lose money and it's infringing on their uh, copyrights. Because one of the, of the uh, points that Nintendo used to, win, to, to basically back um, Tropical Haze LLC into a corner was that the experience of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom basically got ruined for that week it was released a week early, that it leaked early online, um, where people was trying to avoid the internet, avoid spoilers, avoid websites. It was like they had to pretty much stay off the internet for like a, a, a period of time just to make sure that they didn't see anything that has to do with the game because you did have people 
uh, going out their way to play it.